Item hash. SCP-1325. Object class. Euclid. Special containment procedures. All 111 specimens of SCP-1325 currently in the Foundation's possession are housed in the large palurium at Bioresearch Area 7. The temperature and humidity of the paludrium are to be kept constant at ranges of 25-30 C and 50-60%, to respectively, and the specimens are to be fed two to three times a week on crickets, locusts, earthworms, and baby mice. Any eggs laid by the specimens during Easter are to be given to research staff whereupon they will either be used for research, fed to Class D personnel in order to propagate SCP-1325, or destroyed. Description SCP-1325 is a species of frog which resembles the Australian green tree frog Littoria carolea. Genetic analysis confirms that it is closely related to L. carolea. Foundation zoologists have named it the Easter Frog Littoria Pasha. All specimens are anatomically and genetically male. As such, it does not sexually reproduce. On Palm Sunday as defined by the start of the week before the first full moon after March 21st, an egg will start to grow from the back of every adult specimen of SCP-1325. The egg will develop over the course of the Holy Week, until early morning of Easter Sunday, when it will detach from SCP-1325's back. The egg will always begin to develop on Palm Sunday, and be laid on Easter Sunday, regardless of which dates these holidays fall on any given year. Most cases of SCP-1325 have been in countries Australia, New Zealand, and the USA, where the vast majority of the population celebrates Easter, and does so on the date of the first full moon after March 21st. The only exceptions are two cases in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. While Easter is not celebrated in any form, in most of Papua New Guinea, Port Moresby has adopted Western culture to a considerably greater extent than the rest of the country, and thus this does not rule out the possibility that SCP-1325's reproductive cycle is determined by the local culture. The hard protective shell of the egg consists of a thick layer of a substance which is identical to chocolate in taste, appearance, and texture, presumably in order to promote human consumption. Inside the egg is a cluster of more than a dozen small, jelly-like eggs similar to those of a normal amphibian, which are nourished and sustained by the yolk sac and albumin. Given that they are clones of the parent, all eggs are genetically identical. Traces of the benzodiazepine derivative drug prospum have been detected in the yolk sac and albumin. It is thought that prospum's anxiolytic and sedative properties facilitate human consumption by rendering subjects oblivious to the egg's contents. When the egg is fully developed and ready to detach, SCP-1325 will seek out sites where it is likely to attract human consumption typically among similar looking confectionery, before depositing it. The fact that SCP-1325 is able to strategically position its eggs combined with the fact that it is able to time its reproductive cycle to coincide with Easter, suggests that it is unusually intelligent for an amphibian. However, its behavior outside of its reproductive cycle is identical to that of L. Carolea. The egg will remain viable for two to four days after being detached from SCP-1325. If and when it is ingested by a human subject, the eggs within that survive ingestion will hatch into tadpoles in response to the temperature and pH of the stomach. The tadpoles then attach themselves to the wall of the stomach via small hooks on the tips of their tails to prevent themselves from passing through the pylorus into the duodenum along with the chine. 
over the following 10 to 12 days, the tadpoles will feed on the partly digested food in the chyme as they grow and metamorphose into mature specimens of SCP-1325. During this period, the human host will likely experience abdominal discomfort, diarrhea, and loss of appetite to varying degrees of severity. When SCP-1325 specimens are fully developed and able to survive outside the stomach, they will secrete emetic toxins from their skin, thereby inducing heavy vomiting in the host, which allows them to exit the stomach. They will also secrete large volumes of mucus in order to lubricate their passage up the esophagus. The host will experience Borhov's syndrome esophageal rupture in around 25% of cases. Point one, once the specimens have exited the host, they will continue to grow for around 6 months before reaching adult size.